here are the five biggest upcoming Steam Deck changes we have to look forward to. How's it going everyone and welcome to Deck Ready. For today's video, as you just heard in the intro, I have five things that I'm looking forward to coming down the pipe with the Steam Deck that are actually happening sooner rather than later. Before I jump into that though, I gotta show you this new thing that just came in the mail from JSOX. This isn't a sponsored video or anything like that. It's just something I think is genuinely cool and it's a clear, transparent black backplate for the Steam Deck. They cost around $30 and uh, from what I can tell, they're working on a Game Boy Color purple one, which I will definitely be stoked to get my hands on. And I'm just crossing my fingers that JSOX is also working on a front plate for the Steam Deck. I know it's definitely gonna be pretty challenging to put on, but just the idea of having a purple Game Boy Color style Steam Deck is awesome. I mean, I've been playing so many Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance games on the thing already. It's just like bringing me back to my childhood. But what I have right here is cool because as you can hopefully see, JSOX went through the trouble to engrave Deck Ready on this thing. So yes, I will be installing it on my Steam Deck. I will show it off in a new video if you guys would like to see it. But yeah, you can get these right now uh, without the branding of Deck Ready on them, obviously, uh, over on JSOX's website. It feels just as solid as the actual Steam Deck uh, back, which I have taken off a lot. So yeah, if you wanna get your hands on these, I'll have it linked down in the description. The first thing I'm looking forward to in 2023 related to the Steam Deck is HDR. Now this is going to be software implemented HDR that's only going to work when you dock your Steam Deck onto a monitor or a TV that has HDR, but that's a cool feature that I think a lot of people are going to want to take advantage of. Which side note, I don't know why I said in my last video where I was talking about the Steam Deck Slim uh, that OLED uses more battery life. I've known it doesn't use more battery life since the Vita Slim came out and I looked up why that thing was getting worse battery life than my launch Vita was. It was just a slip of the tongue, but thank you for calling me out in the comments. But getting back to HDR on the Steam Deck, Pierre over at Valve was talking about this on Twitter fairly recently, showing off it actually working in specific games like Death Stranding and Deep Rock Galactic. And I've actually seen a similar technology like this related to the Xbox Series X. I used to work for Austin Evans and back in 2020, around March, we got flown out to Microsoft to reveal the Xbox Series X. And one of the coolest features they showed us was like retroactively being able to go back into games like Halo 5, for example, and scan what was going on in the game and heat map it and then retroactively apply HDR to those games that didn't have it at the time. And I'm not sure if that ever came out or if they're still working on it or anything, but seeing it all broken down with the heat maps was pretty cool. And that looks like exactly what's happening here with games like Death Stranding and Deep Rock Galactic on the Steam Deck. Stuff like this is obviously really cool for people who use the Steam Deck as their one and only gaming PC style device. Like you take it on the go, sort of like a Nintendo Switch, and then when you get home, you dock it and play it on your TV or your computer monitor. Uh, I do that all the time. My most recent experience with the Steam Deck was playing Rock Band Unplugged. Shout out to the guy who brought this game up on the subreddit for the Steam Deck. It just put it into my memory, like dug it up from when I was in high school and I had that game on PSP. It was not only extremely easy to get it running with Emu Deck and it looks really good. It was also really easy to get all the DLC songs. So yeah, I was playing that on my monitor using the Steam Deck as sort of like a Wii U style controller and it was an awesome experience. Now obviously you don't need retroactive HDR activated for something like Rock Band Unplugged. I mean that game is really colorful so it might look good. In a game like Death Stranding where you're in a big open map and it's mostly overcast weather, that's where HDR is going to look good. And I'm just going to use this moment to plug the Steam Deck HQ review of Death Stranding Director's Cut. Unfortunately that version of the game is just a mess on Steam Deck. We worked together on the review to figure out the best settings and when you encounter BTs in this game it just just tanks the frame rate. Uh, it works a lot better in the original version of Death Stranding, but I like that factory level. So that's kind of become a non-Steam Deck game for me, but still it is really cool seeing it with HDR. And then the game that runs better on the Steam Deck, uh, Deep Rock Galactic, that's a game I could totally see people playing on a monitor and seeing it with HDR active is also pretty cool. I'm honestly not sure if this is already possible on Linux, but it is cool to see Valve working on it. And I would guess that if they do get it working on the Steam Deck, that would extend to SteamOS 3.0. And that's just another feature that Windows has that you'll have on SteamOS 3.0 when we are able to install it on our PCs. Like I get that there are different flavors of it already out there like Hollow OS, or you can use different versions of Linux and just get that new big picture UI. I just want the official version from Valve because they're putting direct work into making sure it works well on a lot of PC. I guess it's just like a halfway step between like the true Linux experience and using Windows. But yeah, since Pierre at Valve is actively showing this off on Twitter, I would guess this is 
coming sooner rather than later. So that's a cool thing I'm looking forward to this year. The second feature I'm looking forward to when it comes to the Steam Deck this year is the ability to transfer games from your main PC over to your Steam Deck so you don't have to download them again. Now, this is something you can already do. It's a little bit of a tricky process, but again, Valve is baking this into Steam as a whole, which will make it an easier process. And that's exactly what I wanna see. That's what's gonna get more people buying Steam Decks, features that Valve implements on the actual device and implements into the actual Steam client. This feature was already referenced on the Steam database last October, but more recently, it's looking like it's already working for some people who are testing it, which is really cool. And what you're going to be able to do is transfer games from your gaming PC to your Steam Deck over your local network, which not only helps us, right? Like having Death Stranding, for example, because it's the most recent game I just talked about on my main gaming PC, instead of downloading the entire like 60 or 70 gigabyte game again on my Steam Deck, I could just wirelessly transfer it to my Steam Deck and it would probably be a lot quicker. It also helps Valve because it's going to be one less person using their network to download a game that they already have. It's like a cool two-way street situation, which yeah, I'm sure most people are more concerned with the fact that they'll be able to wirelessly transfer their games. I just think it's cool when it's a two-way street situation like this one. Now, obviously, because this feature hasn't been like officially announced yet, as far as I'm aware, there's no indication on whether or not you're going to be able to transfer between Windows and your Steam Deck, but I'm pretty sure that's how the feature will be used. Like obviously, if they don't want to go the extra mile, you can make it work with just like a Linux PC or with SteamOS 3.0 on a main gaming PC, and then it would be easy to transfer back and forth, and I guarantee that feature will come. But obviously, as someone who has a Windows uh, 11 gaming PC, I really want this feature to work with that. Where I could obviously really see this coming in handy is with huge games like Cyberpunk 2077 or Red Dead Redemption 2, even Death Stranding and Death Stranding Director's Cut, Jedi Fallen Order. You know, those bigger games that you just keep on your SSD forever because you don't want to delete them and re-download them again. Uh, on the Steam Deck, you have much more limited space if you just use the drive that's included. Even if you have a one terabyte micro SD card, that space fills up pretty quick. So having the peace of mind, knowing that if, yeah, you have a PC with a much bigger SSD in it, you can store the games there and easily transfer them back. It makes keeping your library on the Steam Deck more pared down and curated a much more cool idea because you're never gonna have to re-download a game. Especially if you're like me and use a gaming laptop, when I travel home to Michigan, I bring my gaming laptop and my Steam Deck. So having the peace of mind that these games that I store on my laptop that has four terabytes of usable space, and I can just transfer them over to my Steam Deck that has two terabytes of space, but I also use it for music and other things on the desktop side, that's a really cool situation that I could see working out really well in 2023. The third thing I'm looking forward to is being able to buy startup movies for the Steam Deck in the Valve Point Shop. So back when the Steam Deck came out, Valve introduced a Steam Deck section to the Point Store where you could actually just spend points on keyboards for the Steam Deck. And I bought them all immediately. And I also thought Valve would kind of continue adding stuff to the Steam Deck store to buy with points because that in turn just encourages you to keep buying games on Steam. But you know, after that first batch of keyboards, they really haven't added much of anything. But one feature they are working on is the ability to add startup movies to your Steam Deck and get them on the Steam Point Store, which I think is really cool. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's basically when you turn on your Steam Deck or switch from desktop to gaming mode, uh, it's that little Steam logo that does the like beep beep and then spins around. And then it's the first thing you see before you load into the actual interface. So people are making custom ones like Game Boy styled ones, GameCube ones. I've seen Half-Life ones. I've seen all sorts of crazy stuff all over the subreddit, which you can just download and add to your Steam Deck right now, but having it again built into Steam is a really cool idea. As far as I'm aware, when this feature was launched, they like retroactively went back into your library and like rewarded you with points for games you already have. So I have never come close to spending the amount of Steam points I have in my account. And I would guess that 99.9% .9 of you watching out there are in a very similar situation. I guess it's a little weird that you can't actually monetize these startup movies because like Steam point currency isn't like an actual currency you can buy games with, but people are already giving these things away for free as it is now. So it's not like Steam is taking something that people are already making money on and then not letting them make money on it. They're basically just giving people a repository to dump them to where people can get them and add them to their Steam Deck easily. Now, the reason people know this is happening is not only because they found it on the back end of Steam, they've also been able to activate the menu on their Steam Deck to get to the point store and see the actual menu where you are going to be able to select these movies. Unfortunately, there's no movies there to add to your Steam Deck 
as of now. But if the feature is already built and being tested, I don't think we're gonna have to wait too long at all before we start seeing this popping up on our actual device. I mean, this is something that I think won't show up in the beta branch of SteamOS. I think this is a feature they'll just release into the stable version, but uh, I could be wrong there. And if it does release into the beta, then we'll know a lot sooner than I initially thought about this feature coming to the Steam Deck. The fourth feature on my list is one that it looks like you can actually take advantage of right now, and that's a huge speed boost with the Dolphin emulator. So Wii games and of course GameCube games are now running a lot better on the Steam Deck. Now this improvement comes down to the Dolphin team doing a lot of work with the Vulcan API and also being able to use the Vulcan memory allocator. There's a whole article over on Gaming on Linux that I highly recommend you read. But just from a raw number standpoint, they were able to improve the performance on Super Mario Galaxy for Wii on the Steam Deck from 85 FPS to 140 FPS. And also you can play Super Mario Galaxy and Super Mario Galaxy 2 at full speed at two times resolution on the Steam Deck now with virtually zero slowdown, which is a huge improvement. And honestly, it's going to get me to play GameCube and Wii games a lot more on my Steam Deck. I went through a ton of headaches trying to get Metroid Prime Trilogy working well on the Steam Deck. Huge shout out to my friend Fan the Deck. He got a great tutorial made on how to actually get it working, but still it had a little bit of slowdown. It had a little bit of shader compilation stutters, just stuff I didn't really want to deal with. And I don't know if this update to Dolphin is going to improve these games specifically, but it does make me a lot more inclined to try. Just because I love when emulators get performance boosts. I love checking stuff like that out down the pipe, especially when I have a frame of reference for a game like Metroid Prime Trilogy, which as I just mentioned, I had a lot of issues with back when the Steam Deck came out. It has improved a lot over time. Like as time has gone on, it's gotten a lot easier to play that game. But my fingers are crossed that these new changes and improvements to the Dolphin emulator are going to fix this game because that's really the main game I want to play on my Steam Deck from the GameCube and or Wii library. Uh, maybe Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes. I'm not a huge fan of that remake, but it's close enough where it'd be a cool game to try out on my deck. And then, and then finally, the fifth thing I'm super excited about with the Steam Deck in 2023 is more options for SSDs because as more SSDs and the 2230 size flood the market, the price on these things is going to go down. I have a one terabyte SSD inside my Steam Deck currently. It's one that I got out of a used Surface on eBay and I'm pretty sure it cost well over $200 back when I bought it. Uh, thanks for making the video where I put it in my Steam Deck, the biggest video on this channel because that basically paid for this SSD. But now we're starting to see even more options from brands like Samsung, which I really like because over on the PlayStation 5, I use the Samsung 980 Pro, a two terabyte one with a heat sink inside that console. And I transfer games to it. I transfer games off of it. I download games to it. I record all my footage to it. It does not ever break a sweat and it still works just as good as the day I put it in my PS5, I think like a year and a half ago at this point. So yeah, I have a lot of affinity for the brand Samsung and I just kind of trust them with their drives. So to hear that they're working on 2230 drives that will work in the Steam Deck and provide some pretty good speeds on top of that. That's exactly what I want to see. Now, if you really want to get a drive right now for your Steam Deck, you can go with the Sabrent drives that just came out. You can get a one terabyte option for $170. I know that's a little expensive if you compare it to something like a full-sized SSD because over on the PS5, I do updates on SSD price drops all the time. And right now you can get both the 980 Pro and the WD Black SN850 for around $100. $180 at the two terabyte uh, size. So yeah, 170 for one terabyte and 2230. It seems like a lot, but really it's because there aren't a lot of 2230 options out there and making them that small basically inflates the price. So $180 is a lot cheaper than people were paying just a year ago when the Steam Deck came out for the exact same size drive. And I had to get mine used taken out of a PC and it still cost well over $170. So if you want to get one, I haven't personally tried out this Sabrent drive, but a lot of people over on the subreddit and in my comments have gotten one for their Steam Deck and they say it works just fine. So I feel like it's trustworthy enough. And if you wanna see the process of putting a new SSD inside your Steam Deck, like I mentioned, the most popular video on Deck Ready is the uh, whole tutorial I made back when the Steam Deck came out. So you should definitely go check that out. And again, as always, I have every SSD and pretty much every accessory I talk about linked down in the description. I would really appreciate it if you use those links because of course I get a little bit of an affiliate kickback on that. And then I can buy more Steam games to test out on my Steam Deck. Anyway, guys, that about covers it for the five things I'm excited to see with the Steam Deck in 2023. Let me know if I missed anything or if there's anything you're excited for on this list down in the comments below. And remember to subscribe if you haven't already. As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne and I'll see you in the next one. Shape on.